Hi, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Sean Piddock. I'm a neurologist uh, at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, I'm co-director of the Neuromonology Laboratory. And I'm going to talk to you today uh, a little bit about neuromyelitis optica. So neuromyelitis optica is an inflammatory central nervous system demyelinating disorder. It has a predilection for affecting the optic nerves and the spinal cord. Uh, when it affects the optic nerves, we call this optic neuritis. And when it affects the spinal cord, we call it uh, transverse myelitis. And patients with neuromyelitis optica tend to get uh, episodes of either optic neuritis or transverse myelitis. Uh, when they present with optic neuritis, uh, they'll often present with pain in an eye, with visual blurring or loss of vision in an eye. And when they present with transverse myelitis, the symptoms are generally weakness in the lower extremities, numbness in the lower extremities, or problems with their bowels or bladder uh, function. Sometimes they'll have a sensory level up around the chest. And these are the types of symptoms that patients can present with. Um, there's been dramatic advances made in the field of neuromyelitis optica. Uh, for many years, neuromyelitis optica was considered under the umbrella term of multiple cirrhosis. Uh, but in fact, neuromyelitis optica is a very uh, separate and distinct disease. And this, uh, the ability to make this distinction has been assisted by the identification of the first ever uh, blood test uh, that is specific and sensitive for any form of central nervous system inflammatory demyelination disease. And that blood test is a blood test called NMOIgG. NMOIgG is an antibody that targets a water channel on the astrocytic end feet uh, in uh, the brain. And it is this antibody that has allowed us to distinguish uh, uh, this disease from multiple cirrhosis. Uh, it's important to distinguish neuromyelitis optica from multiple cirrhosis uh, because these disorders are treated differently. Uh, multiple cirrhosis is treated with immunomodulatory medications uh, such as uh, glutarimer acetate or interferon beta, uh, whereas um, uh, neuromyelitis optica is generally treated with immunosuppressant drugs such as azathioprine or Celsept, and these are usually used in combination with steroids. Uh, other drugs that are used for neuromyelitis optica include rituximab. The objective of the drug treatments in neuromyelitis optica are to stop the attacks uh, because we now think that disability in neuromyelitis optica, whether it be visual disability or uh, disability in respect of arm or leg function, really uh, occurs because of the attacks. And so if you can stop and prevent attacks, we hope that we can prevent disability. And it would appear that these immunosuppressive medications reduce the likelihood of you having an attack if you indeed have the disease. In neuromyelitis optica, when a patient presents with an optic neuritis uh, with visual loss or a transverse myelitis where there is loss of power in the legs, uh, there are some treatments to consider for those acute attacks. Uh, remember, in neuromyelitis optica, we want to prevent attacks. In other words, that's preventive treatment. But in the setting of having an attack or being in the midst of an attack, there are some important medications or approaches to consider. First of all, in the setting of either an optic neuritis or a transverse myelitis uh, that results in any form of uh, disability or impairment, uh, we consider using intravenous methoprednisolone, one gram intravenously daily for about five days. Uh, other uh, physicians sometimes use oral prednisone. And this uh, tends to uh, increase the rapidity at which one makes a recovery. In other words, you will recover or make recovery quicker. If in the event of there being a poor recovery or uh, not an adequate recovery from uh, the attack in the setting of the steroids, then sometimes we consider giving a plasmapheresis treatment. Uh, we also call this PLEX. And in this situation, uh, patients uh, have the uh, antibodies removed from their blood. Uh, generally, plasmapheresis is, is given uh, uh, alternate days for about seven treatments, or in other words, seven treatments over 14 days. Uh, and we know now from work that was done here at the Mayo Clinic that if, for example, you have a severe episode of transverse myelitis with paraplegia or loss of power in your legs and you don't respond to steroid, you probably have about a 40% chance of having a dramatic improvement with plasmapheresis. So it's important to remember the, this treatment uh, if you uh, have NMO and have an attack. Uh, up, up until now, there really hasn't been a good understanding of what uh, are the underlying causes of inflammatory central nervous system demyelinating diseases. Uh, even in multiple cirrhosis, uh, we still don't really understand the origins or the etiology of that disease. In neuromyelitis optica, there really has been a significant advance made over recent years. Uh, with the initial identification of NMOIgG, the marker antibody of NMO, uh, at the Mayo Clinic and the subsequent identification of its target, the water channel, 
uh, we've really uh, uh, begin, begun to understand this disorder much, much more. Um, uh, furthermore, there's been uh, uh, a, a dramatic drive uh, 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 and there's been the development of um, uh, a kind of a worldwide research consortium uh, to investigate this de disease. Uh, this has been uh, very much helped uh, by the Guthrie Jackson Charitable Foundation, uh, who have uh, a passion uh, and a strong desire to uh, find a cure for this disease. And uh, we now have a, an international consortium of investigators that are working very hard to try and really advance our understanding of this condition.